Today we're raiding AI-generated Magic the Gathering cards. All right, we're gonna start off with the Zemmol Laret Shade, the red, red, three generic, three, one, Kavu, with Flying, Vigilance, Trample, Haste, and it's a Lord to Elementals. All your Elementals get plus one, plus one. And also, you may cast a spell for each spell you cast this turn. You may cast a spell, oh sorry, you may cast a spell of each spell you cast this turn. Is this like some weird storm card or does this last last sentence not make sense? And then of course we gotta read the flavor text. AI is an art of flavor text. You make your body as hard as diamond and your mind as clever as steel. Yeah, be a metal head. <laughs> be a metal head. Your allies are your weapon. Your enemy is your target. You do not fear or dread the master shade. Anyway, I don't I don't trust this card. I don't trust this card whatsoever. Yeah, we love the AI stream, so buckle up for the craziest of all the AI stuff you've ever seen. Okay, we got Keeper of the Veil, a black three generic for a 5-4 elk, probably descendant of Oko. Trample, whenever Keeper of the Veil blocks, it gets minus X minus X until end of turn, where X is the amount of life you've lost this turn. That card sucks! This is a real, this could be a real card. I guess if it blocks, it will check. Uh, actually, hold on, how would this trigger? Would it be continuous? Like if I lightning, like okay, let's say I block, and then all of a sudden you bolt me, does it immediately get minus three, minus three? It gets minus X, minus X until end of turn, where X is the amount of life you've lost this turn. I guess it triggers every single time you lose life. And for that reason, uh, wait, what if your life goes positive? Probably nothing happens. Probably nothing happens. It's only when you lose life. It doesn't say when you're, it's not when it change of life, it's whenever you lost life. Not a change of life. All right, we can, Keeper of the Veil, keep keeping. And we got, oh, we got a snow covered island. Cabin. We got a cabin snow covered. This looks nice. So all of a sudden I want a series of this thing. It's a beautiful, beautiful little cabin in the middle of nowhere. But if that water raises like one foot, I mean the whole thing is underwater basically. The uh, Thoe, the Flather Shapter. All right, let's get our Shapt on. Uh, blue four generic for a three two. No card type whatsoever. That's right, the question mark. Who knows what this could be? Pounterist, your non Tronger player. The knock, you know, yeah, I've seen, I've read enough. <laughs> it didn't make really much, you know, we knew what we were getting into, the first, first name of this thing, and it really didn't get any better. This is one of those cards that gets worse the more you read it. Yeah, straight, straight to unglued, straight to the garbage bin. We got snow-covered planes now. We got the cabin planes. Okay, the S Sick Sniler. The green one generic for a 4-4 four, four human warrior, warrior. Before black, six Sniler gains flying until end of turn. Not bad. For a black, we can get six Sniler gains flying until end of turn. And it'll deal one damage to you. Oh my god, which, which one of these two abilities should I use? The one that gives me flying or the one that also supports my death shadow? I guess that's what it's for. I mean, if you want to reduce your own life total, you, you have that option. Oh, but you have indestructible! You have... You, so actually, the, both the second ability is completely redundant. You can't change your life total because so long as this thing's on the battlefield, you have indestructible. Yeah, now I can't be destroyed. No one can be destroyed. No, right, so I could just flex with this thing. Just like, okay, gains flying until end of turn, and I'll deal damage to myself. For no reason! Okay, it's a little bit silly. A bit of a redundant second ability, but I guess it's legal. It's all legal here. Sick Death Shadow would be a sweet brew. Sort of. Oh, we got the Cobra Dragon. So it's a dragon snake. Except it's neither, because it's an elemental. Oh, we got a green, green, three generic, four, four, indestructible cobra, cobra dragon. Uh, when an opponent controls a creature with that many blocking, return a creature card at random from your graveyard to the battlefield. 
got like the loading sign going on over here. When an opponent controls a creature with that many blocking, all right, okay, I get, it. I get it. I don't get it. It don't make sense. That's what it means. It don't make sense. All right, moving on. The Stunty Rod Rodator. The stun a Stunty Rodator. Land. This reminds me of the Rat Colony card that we saw once. Okay, tap, add a generic mana. Um, uh, pay a black, one generic, tap, exile target creature card with convert mana cost two or less. If the spell was kicked, which of course it won't be, draw two cards. And we can also pay one, tap to un... <laughs> pay one, tap, untap it! Add one mana of any color. It's like, it's like a vigilance land. Do we get anything? So we filter, right? It's a filter land for any mana. We, we put mana in, we tap, and then we get to untap it! Filter, filter anything. Yeah, super mana fixing. Second ability doesn't make any sense. Exile target creature card with convert mana cost two or less. So you just uh, get to exile cards. If the spell was kicked, draw two cards. That, that That's never gonna happen. I'm gonna tap my Stundy road, uh, ro Rodator. It rodated all the way around, 360 degrees. That's what happened. It rodated. The Rodator. Okay, hold on, are we gonna pass? Okay, we'll sort of make it pass. Most of these things are illegal. The sentence is illegal though. It would trigger if an aura or something triggers on tap. Oh yeah, okay. If something taps, trigger. If something untaps, trigger. Many triggers. Experiment egg. The king egg. Dr. Robotnik's son to be, I guess. Uh, blue, white for a 1-1 one, one Kithkin soldier. Menace. When experiment egg enters the battlefield, you become the monarch. Is this broken? I don't have enough experience with the monarch to know if this thing is broken or not. It's bas basically what it says. Enters the battlefield, you're going to draw a card at the end of the turn, right? So, but the thing is, your opponent has to like attack you and deal damage to you in order to get the monarch back. So if you're just the monarch, you're just going to get an extra turn, get an extra card every turn. The monocle row. I almost spit my coffee out. Who knew Kithkin laid eggs? Yeah, who did know? Oh, God. I could just. I, I just got the picture of it now, like Kithkins are laying eggs on a nest or something like that. Humpty Dumpty AI. King eggs are free range, cage free. Yeah, free farm animals. <laughs> free the farm animals. Uh, well, well, anyway, it's a legal card, I guess. That's all it is. <clears throat> it, I don't know if it's broken or not, though. Yeah, hobbit children. The hobbits lay eggs. Mom, where do babies come from? Eggs, stupid! Look at how the chickens do it. Yes, that's exactly how mommy did it as well. Alright, uh, Gore. For a white four generic, we have a legendary sorcery. Flying and prevent, uh, Wiro Wick. That's right. Prevent this thing from ever being, uh, legal. Feast of Illusion! Four mana, artifact. Players have no maximum hand size. Red 1 generic. Uh, Feast of Illusion becomes a 3-4 soldier creature until end of turn. That's totally fair. And then we get to tap at 1 mana of any color. So it's 4 mana for a mana rock. That we can turn into a 3-4 soldier. That we have no maximum hand size. And where there are no creatures on the battlefield, sacrifice Feast of Illusion. When Feast of Illusion is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, return Feast of Illusion to its owner's hand. That's pretty neat, actually. This card does a lot of stuff. And yet I feel like it does nothing at all. So it's it can only stay on the battlefield so long as there's another creature on the battlefield. And it will never count because at some point, like the uh, billet, you know, end of turn, it'll return back to, into an artifact. So people love the arts. Abzo loves the card. All right, let's, let's super pass. Yeah, it does a lot of stuff. This is a nice utility knight. I don't even know... <laughs> Does it do, do anything useful? You have no maximum hand size. Until you blow up the board! And you lose Feast of Illusion. Hold on, it's actually a bit redundant. They should just say, when there are no creatures left on the battlefield, return Feast of Illusion back to your hand. I guess if there's a rest in peace or something. 
If it goes to the graveyard, you'd be gone for forever. And janky, but very fair. Very janky. Very busy. What's going on in this art? This is like some really long arm of some sort. All right, let's keep going. Uh, Ganond Wolver. Uh, for four generic mana, we have a 2-2 creature. Tap. Target creature dies. <laughs> Draw a card. It just dies. I, I get... Sounds legal to me. It just... So that... It sounds like it gets around protection. Like, if it's, um... See, if you're indestructible, you can't be destroyed. But does it really protect you from dying? Does it? So I think it gets around uh, cards that have protection, basically have protection from stuff and uh, also has uh, indestructible. That's a pretty broken ability too. Just it dies and you draw a card. You think it danger? This is the tamest line of cards we've seen on Coffin MT or for these AI generated cards on Coffin MTG for a very long time. You and MTG Gaming Bob, an investor knows that this is a busted card. What do you think this would go on the secondary market? But it's uncommon. I think it's uncommon over here. I'd say minus one, minus one is is dying. Oh, you mean undying? Hey, Jackson. Kill a creature, draw a card each turn. OP. But I like it. I think it's legal. I think it's a pretty legal. I think it's a pretty legal card. It. I don't think it's even that broken. It's four mana. I don't know, maybe in Commander it's a little bit more absurd because, you know, you kids and your soul rings and stuff like that. I can definitely see this thing coming out on turn two, but normally it shouldn't. I wonder what this would do in an actual constructed tournament. Ah, eh, whatever. Moving on. We have a split card here. Uh, Standing Curse and Cerise Charmer. Oops, it's not what I wanted. Oh, I get to see both of them. All right, so we've got uh, Cerise Charmer for one blue, one generic. It's an artifact. What, what the hell is this card? Okay, Standing Curse. Black, one generic sorcerer. As an additional cost to cast this spell, sack a creature, a planeswalker. Deals five damage to target creature. You may search a library and or graveyard for a card named Cerise Charmer. Put onto the battlefield, then shuffle. You're putting... Oh, the Cerise... Oh, then we go get Cerise Charmer. Okay, so Cerise Charmer gets put onto the battlefield. Tap at a mana. Pay one tap. Sacrifice Cerise Charmer. Target player mills a card. That is pretty underwhelming. This is actually just a bit too fair, in my opinion. Additional cost to cast a spell. Deals five damage to target creature. You may search your library. This is totally fair. I mean, I guess you sack a creature and turn into a mana rock that can mill your opponent by one card. A limited bomb? May I guess. Maybe. You sacked a creature for this mana rock. It's super meh. It's a blue artifact, but makes colorless. Hmm, okay, Urza. Alright, whoops. Moving on, we've got the uh, R Gang Tor. A blue three generic sorcery. Uh, with on, what, sorry, once, Churek 3, Conolor Tunk, and Creature Colors. Yes, of course. It's, one of, it's just one of these AI generated cards that are, uh, making up words in the vocabulary. I wouldn't mind if they explained some of these mechanics. Like, what is the danger of, uh, once, uh, Churse Rick 3? Okay, this Fortune, this Force Crusher. Uh, four mana for a 2-3 Crumbless. Here's the Crumblesses, people. It seems to be some sort of, uh, Cyclops of some sort. Target creature an opponent controls wood has power! It would, wouldn't it? It had. <laughs> Do I love it if they just r remove the wood and it would just be target creature and opponent controls has power. <laughs> a lot of really unusable cards today. Okay, assess. Uh, assess the assassin. 
white too generic for an enchantment at the beginning of each end step each opponent loses two life and you gain two life holy crap this is like what's it called it reminds me of extort except we don't have to spend anything for this extort each opponent loses two life and you gain two life zingers don't like this creature yeah each not each of yours wild exactly all right, so uh, we'll we'll assess the assess the assassin. But before we do that, we gotta thank our sponsor today, Fusion Gaming Online. dot com, my favorite place to get my magic cards. If you need to get Dominator remasters or what's it called, Frexia, all will be one singles. Oh god, I gotta get my C Chrome Coast for MTG Philly. You know where to get them from. You get them at FusionGamingOnline. dot com. Don't forget to use coupon code Nikachu though to get five percent off all your purchases. And also MTG Philly, sorry, yeah, Magicon Philly coming up. Are you prepared in Pioneer? If you're not, prepare by renting the decks in Pioneer on Mana Traders. Find the deck right for you, because once you're done the deck and it and it just absolutely craps all over you, you just rent another one. You can support the channel using my Mana Traders link in the description below, or you can save 10% off your first two months using coupon code Nikachu underscore EK2. Boop. All right, let's get back to these wild Robo Rosewater cards. Uh, anyway, I guess, I mean, this is totally legal. Bad for commander diplomacy, though. This kills people quickly. Does it really? At the beginning of, oh, it's each end step. Holy moly. So one round is like eight life. It's like, uh, now it's more like Sulfuric Vortex. It's a one-sided Sulfuric Vortex. And you gain life instead. Off topic, uh, do you have a favorite All Will Be One card? No, I got nothing. I, I haven't even looked at the full set yet. Yeah, n not each of yours, what I was saying. Yeah, it's uh, it's each each player. Okay, all of a sudden this might be. I don't know. It's on the verge of being broken. I think it's okay. <laughs> Blue bomber misses the coupon code of P9 to the S. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> it was a good code while it lasted. I believe it's expired now. Exquisite blood makes this stupid. Does it? Would it just combo infinitely? Don't remember. Anyway. Assess the assassin. That assassin's doing a very good job. Okay, the roaring stag. Uh, I thought a stag is like a pig. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I don't know what a stag is. A red one generic bear. The bears. We got one. Not really much of a bear. Seeing at one one. This is smaller than the average bear. Black. Search your library for a basic land. Put that card onto the battlefield and shuffle. Holy moly! Holy of moly moly! Yeah, this thing danger. To basically just pay black and just put basic land cards from your deck onto the battlefield. Oh, hold on. No, no, no. Yeah, search your library for a basic land card. Put onto the battlefield. And just end of turn. Sink all my mana into more mana. Uh, and it does that. Oh, whoa. It doesn't even come into play tapped. It doesn't come in. Yeah, into the battlefield. Untap. You'd be basically activate this once. Put your and all your lands onto the battlefield because you'll I'll like pay a black search for a basic swamp put that onto the battlefield tap look for another basic swamp get all the swamps and after that get everything else this thing is insane it feeds itself <laughs> who needs them picnic baskets okay imagine your opponent plays out all their lands using roaring stag and then you play ja oh jackal hops <laughs> blow up all the lands all the, all the swamps followed by life drain. Who knew bears love swamps? Secretly, they're in love with the swamps. Anyway, this thing's super danger. Yeah, that's uh, that's a no from me. Yeah, one of the most broken card of the day. Okay, Jenna Quish Shipes. The Jenna Quish Shipes land. Tap at a generic. Or you can tap at a blue or black. Activate only as a sorcery. That is in. That is fresh. That is fresh mechanic design. So that is really neat. So we could make dual lands in the future, maybe even fetchable lands in the future. 
uh, where you can activate, you can get the dual land portion only if you're, if you promise to use, like, sorcery speed, uh, cards. So, like, for example, a control deck won't use this very well unless it's a tap out control deck, sorcery speed control deck. This is where AI shows its brilliance. Yeah, very, very fresh design space. We've never been here before. Huh. Very cool card. Definitely pass. And that could be a new fetchable land. Yeah, someone tell Wizards of the Coast! We promise to, I don't know, delete this card from existence just so that they can take all the credit. I wonder how long it's going to be until uh, Wizards of the Coast, the R&D, just starts running out of ideas. And they're forced to use AI-generated cards for new ideas. Bad and blue-black, though. Uh, why? Yeah, wait, hey, Mara, where are you? Imagine this with ritual spells from red and black. Cyborg Gaming says, I think you could use it for instant speed cards since mana doesn't go away until the end of the phase. Uh, correction, it doesn't go away until the end of the step. That's an old rule. A long time ago, you could float mana throughout an entire phase, but these days, mana doesn't float anywhere beyond a step. So if you're in your upkeep and you go to your draw step, uh, it's gone. Or if you go from, like, your first main phase to your attack step, your mana is gone. You can't you can't float mana between steps anymore. Uh, but, you, I mean, of course you can still use the colorless if you want to. Turns your colored instance into sorceries. Yeah, basically. Alright, cool card. Very cool. Rebuking Brute! A black, black, two generic instant with cascade. Create X... XX blue and white creature tokens with flying where X is the number of cards in your hand That sounds absolutely broken That's just crazy. So if I have like four cards in my hand I'm going to get four 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 creatures at instant speed and I get to cascade and I get to do it This thing is it's stupid stupid strong where X is the number of cards in my hand. Or, or imagine I have seven cards in my hand. Uh, and I just pl play this card. End of turn, cast Rebuking Brute. Have seven, seven, sevens. With flying, no less. Yeah, give me. Cascade into a... <laughs> yeah, the true. This card hasn't even resolved yet. Cascade into Ancestral Vision. So then I could go from seven... To, or I mean, I could draw this for the turn. Have eight cards. If we have 10, 10, 10 flyers. It's super dangerous. Yeah, this card is beyond broken. Too broken. Way too broken. Consecrated Sphinx in this. Super broken. Create X, 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 blue and white creature tokens. The AI has been looking at, um, what is that shark card? Uh, the Sharknado Blue Cycler. I don't remember anymore. I can't remember names of cards anymore. Too many cards out there. I just know what they do. I don't need to know. I don't need to know the name. Strategically, that's not very important. Shark Typhoon, that's right. Thank you so much, Jackson. You're there where I need you. Uh, Corbinick says, it needs to say, if you don't win the turn you use this, you lose the game. Yeah, something to that effect. Although you could easily just polish off a bunch of people with this card. Uh, Kathen Vent The. Uh, white, three generic, white and three generic for a 1 2 sh fire. Uh, when Kathen Vent The enters the battlefield, you gain 38 Becontrament. Kathen Vent The, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Kathen Vent The. I'm done here. The Thran Dynamo? Plane, is it? If you would draw a card, instead draw... <laughs> you draw seven cards. If What what kind of weird... Uh, what's it called? This is a plane chase card, right? If you would draw a card, instead draw seven cards. Welcome to Professor Oakville. Population Professor Oaks. Whenever you cast a spell, you may put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. As if that matters in this world. Here, have a counter. 
means absolutely nothing. Wait a minute, hold it, you just draw into your entire deck if you draw a card, instead draw- Oh no, it's just instead draw seven. But hold on, wouldn't there be another replacement effect? I attempt to draw seven. Okay, instead draw like 49. Hold on, we got, must go deeper. Okay, instead of drawing four, and then instead of drawing 49 times seven, don't we just like permanently draw out our entire decks? Doesn't even need the chaos roll of the plane, yeah, the planer die either. Nope. Brian F with a super chat. Thanks so much. I'm so glad I was able to tune in today. The AI cards always make for epic shows. Absolutely, Brian. It's my favorite as well. Should say when. How does this work with Teferi's Ageless Insight? I have no idea. Would be sick with let. As far as I'm concerned, with this get. <laughs> Whoever is last to play uh, win wins because anyway like the moment you take your turn and draw a card Oh, no, no actually whoever goes first wins Oh, no, but this is commander if you go first you still draw a card for the turn because as far as I understand you just deck yourself out Actually as far as I'm concerned nothing happens in this game the game just continuously checks how many it just keeps multiplying Times seven how many cards you would draw but you don't actually end up drawing anything Anyway, I don't know how to interpret this. If you if you would draw a card, instead draw seven. Or maybe it's just if you draw one card, draw seven. For every one card, it replaces it with seven. I need a ju judge! I need a judge here. Someone help. I need a security blanket. Everyone wants that power. The power of drawing cards until they realize you have to draw yourself out. It makes you deck yourself, I think. But I don't know. No, you draw seven once. Replacement effects don't modify it more than once. All right, Jackson. Thanks so much. We got some help. Zarather. Thanks so much. Look, Mom. I've made it onto Nikachu's live stream. That's right. Looks like an AI-generated scarecrow. It's a replacement effect. It only happens once. Still broke. Oh, of course. Draw seven cards. Basically, uh, if you win the die roll, you better win the game. Because if you don't... And the next person's gonna win the game. Well, I don't know if I gave this the buzzer, but yeah, we're gonna buzz that. It's a little too strong. Too strong. Archoneer. Uh, Ar Archoneed powder. Don't don't touch that stuff, kids. Don't breathe that. Okay, blue, 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 green, black. Legendary planeswalker with four loyalty. Plus one. Until your next turn, target land you control becomes a 3 4 creature with flying. And first strike, vigilance, trample, and indestructible. You get an emblem with uh, whenever you cast a spell, roll two cards. <laughs> roll two cards and lose all abilities until you reveal a creature card. Uh, you may look at this card for as long as for as long as they removed a card of that chosen player into the dast in the chosen player's graveyard. Then you may put that card on the bottom of your library if it's a land card and in and into your hand you may put it on the bottom of your library. Oh, that was the minus eight. The minus eight starts at you get an emblem. So uh, I don't know the plus one. That was totally fair. The minus eight. Thank God it's so hard to get to that you'll never do it. Yeah, roll two cards. We're bringing back chaos orb mechanics. So you go roll them chaos orbs. I have my, why even keep reading? <laughs> why even keep reading after roll two cards? Well, you never know. Maybe they'll even explain it. The Rabbit Cam, thanks so much. Have a tenor for all the entertainment you've given me. Hope you're doing good, mate. Thank you so much, Rabbit Corn. I really appreciate it. Nikachu attempts to read a card and becomes confused. Yeah, and I'm going to hurt myself in the confusion. Anyway, okay, this card doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It's Ark... Arkan... Arch on need dust. Don't breathe that. What is this? If you're following this account, I don't already know the Rosewater, you should. Fresco is a popular tourist destination. This is that's not Vraska. Oh, someone made a Bunzi card. Fresca is a popular tourist destination. Done. Pay Frexen in a black or two lives. Have been paid to go to the lowest bidder. I don't know what that means. Uh, zero draw card and die. This is good. Minus two. The target being 
becomes a valuable ally of tap that victim take away all rights and lose all cards and abilities then new the ability new uh if the kidney is smaller than nine use the same poison i guess this is when ai goes super deep this ai is not very smart smarter ai over here that actually makes cards that make sense Okay, uh, black one generic for, sorry, we got a Sveeling Glide Mate. Black one generic for a 0-3 Elf Warrior with Deedon Ding 2. How high was the AI's randomness set for this? It must have been really high. Yeah, super high. We're going straight to platinum speed. This is not AI, it's Google Translate. <laughs> AI makes Magic the Gathering cards based around Google Translate. Anyway, it's boring. These cards that have abilities that I cannot interpret are not very interesting. Torture of Guardians, a white one generic instant. Exile all creatures you don't control. Target creature gets plus one plus one until end of turn for each opponent. Could you two or more cards this turn? That is a legal card. Exile old creed. It's an interesting combat trick. Just exile everything you don't control. Oh, you came after me? Well, I'm gonna exile everything. <laughs> the exile is super high today. Sorry, I mean the AI is super high. Does this danger? Is this... What, what am I missing here? Oh, it's not blinking that we're just straight up exile. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. I missed that one. You know, when I see exile, it's like exile until end of turn, but it actually just exiles permanently. Exile all creatures you don't control. Okay, they're all gone. The way <laughs> Two mana, instant sweeper, hits everything that's indestructible and has protection from anything, and you get to keep your creatures. Oh, by the way, if you drew two or more cards this turn, I get a counter on one of my creatures on top of that. That's the cherry on top. All right, this is actually broken. This is beyond broken. Dendening three whenever this creature blocks or becomes blocked it gets plus three plus three until end of turn Why can't we get like the explanation for this? Is it in the comments section? I think we need to get explanations for these uh, these weirdo cards Otherwise, it don't make sense and why do we have to pay for it becomes blocked gets plus three plus three until end of turn What's the three? Oh, so like Dending three, you get plus three, plus three based on the dendening value. Anyway, okay, yeah, this card is beyond broken. Probably exile creatures you don't control. All of them. For two mana. Can I read this? I want to say it starts at 9 a.m. Like, or 5 a.m. Sleeper Van... Tula, the whisper, um, ain't there's fairy something. Very long name, very hard. Probably the longest name in the game. But they fit it. Screw the character count and screw font. This is where you like put, if you want to fit a picture, you like squish it together in like a MS Paint. Name the broken thing first, but it keeps concise, then put a whole bunch of stuff after. This is how broken cards pass. R&D hates this trick. Anyway, it's a 1-4 for 2 mana, which is, uh, by all means, pretty fair. And it's a dinosaur. People love dinosaurs. Yu-Gi-Oh text? <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh will do nothing, except it will not, will, not, it will not stop until every word is can fit on that template. Competition for the longest name ever, Elemental. Crimson Wolf, thanks for the super chat. Can you finish that red dinosaur name, please? I can't. I can't even read. I'm it's hurting my eyes just looking, staring at this. Anyway, moving on. Uh, uh, the dinosaur's back with Storm? Hold on, why do we have a second one? Okay, danger when you do. How do I do this? Okay, hold on. Open image and new tab. We're going deep here. Can't get that close. Okay. Dungeon. When you do. 
These who open with them to flaming tear forge shadow, but thread essay into a teal of beauty. That's what all will not seen it. Seville? There we go. The mystery's over. Say that ten times fast. You won't. Okay. Uh, I want to give it tired of this card. Yeah, the next Borbor. <laughs> the next Borborigmos. Except it's useless. What do we think of two mana for a 1 4 creature? Is that pretty good? That's, <laughs> that is one hell of a family name. It's one of those family names that just is accumulative. They just keep adding to that family name over and over and over again. I had a pet teal of beauty. All right, moving on. We've got uh, Siner Elliance. Black, white, red, red, two generic for an 8 8 dinosaur advisor. Love the bow tie. They had a lot of, they had good fashion back then. They watched Bill Nye, the science guy. Would not be surprised Bill Nye has gone into the past to see the dinosaurs and then gave them some better fashion sense. Uh, tap, add one man of any color. I love that on my uh, six mana cards. Pay three, put a charge counter on Signer Aliens, then create a ninja in the mana flop. Put that card onto the battlefield. If you do, put it onto the battlefield. Otherwise, create a token that's a copy of it. Okay. <laughs> no matter what, we're gonna get that ninja. If, if, if it comes from the mana flop, or we put it onto the battlefield, and if somehow we can't do that, we're gonna make a copy of it anyway. I do love ninjas in the mana flop. Who doesn't like ninjas from the mana flop? Sue! Agar Savin. Uh, red, two generic for a 3 1 Plains Island Horf. So, what? I Can I tutor this thing? I'm pretty sure, based on the rule, it's an artifact creature. But it's a Plains Island. I'm pretty sure we can fetch this into play. Sliver creatures you control have hex proof. Uh, pay it red and one generic. Sue! Agar Savin gets plus two plus zero until end of turn. I'm pretty sure we can like use a flooded strand, crack it, and just put this guy right right onto the battlefield. It's a Plains Island, isn't it a sl isn't it a sliver? Well, it's a descendant of the slivers. It's a horf. It's a, like a, maybe it's like maybe it's the sliver before the first sliver. Maybe it gave birth to the first sliver. It gives birth to all sorts of creature types. Printable? I don't know if it's printable. Yeah, you can tutor with a fetch. Because, like, a fe fetch lands specifically say... Let's go look up flooded strand. Like, fetch lands specifically say, you know, pay pay one life, sacrifice flooded strand. Search your life for a plains or island card. It's not like a land. Just plains and island card. Put onto the battlefield. You know what I'm saying here? And then all of a sudden, you get your Sue Agar saving at end of turn. You, you could get... I go, it costs a fetch land, so I mean you won't, you don't get a land in play, and it does it costs your land drops. But uh, I don't know, zero mana, three one creature seems fine to me. It can tap. Oh yeah, I guess it can tap for mana too. Yeah, I forgot. Plains and islands automatically tap for mana. So what does that mean? This card super danger. Can't let you can't we can't have fetchable three one creatures around here. That's broken. Ruling, because it doesn't have the land bit, a lot of green cards that search for a basic land won't work. Fetch lands would work, though. Yes. I'm so waiting for the fetchable non-land <laughs> non island types. Yeah, eat your heart out, Dryad Arbor. We got the Sue Egg. I mean, hey! Dryad Arbor set the stage for this type of uh, design. What a slippery slope this has been. All right, Nimbus Cry Cavale for a green three generic sorcery. Choose one. Return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. But you can only choose one. All right, well, I mean, it's technically legal. Nothing broken around here. It's not even that good. It's like <laughs> tough choices. Very tough. Man, what am I going to do here? 
I could return target creature card from my graveyard to, from my hand. Or I could return target creature card from my graveyard to my hand. Or I could return target creature card from my graveyard to my hand. Such tough choices. The illu yeah, the illusion of choice. This one or that one. It's a format erased. It's terrible. It's actually so bad. But it's legal. Yeah, just close your eyes and point. How to stall for turns. By the way, you can return to your creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Alright, moving on. Uh, Otherworldly Enka Dudzoa. Oh god. This is like a custom card where someone had to squeeze in every ability they could possibly want in here. Irkusu, thanks so much for your super chat. Does a Teferi evolve to be a Tefable? Oh, that's cute. I like that. All right, white red, too generic for our otherworldly Enka Dud Zoa. For a 7-9, I like that power and toughness design over there. That's really nice. For a 7-9 Elf Shaman, as long as you control another goblin, put a percentage counter on otherworldly en Enka Dud Zoa. Oh god, we're moving into percentages now. Whenever a creature dealt damage by otherworldly Enka Dud Zoa this turn, with the greatest power among creatures you control, destroy that creature. When otherworldly Enka Dudzoa becomes the target of a spell, this creature gets plus two plus zero until end of turn. Spend only white mana on X. A bit redundant there. Whenever otherworldly Enka Dudzoa attacks, each opponent sacrifices a creature. And whenever another spirit enters the battlefield under your control, that creature gets plus one plus zero until end of turn. Return it plus. Return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Anyway, this is too many words. I had enough of this. Moving on. Oh, we got a sad panda looking thing here. Uh, no name. Uh, yeah, no name, no cost. But legal. Legal card. Creature. 2-3. Protection from green. A creature may be such a f may be such friend. I'm not entertained it. Where is this where does this design come from? This AI design. What a sad looking panda. Yeah, print it. Let's go! The no name uncosted creature. You can cascade into it though. It is legal. Uh can we ether vial? I guess we can. Yeah, I guess we can ether vial this thing in play. Turn one vial. Put our two three pro green creature in play. Which is one of the most useless of all the protections, like pro green, like how much green removal is there out there? Abrupt Decay, Assassin's Trophy, I don't know, I can't name a whole lot. <laughs> the No Tribe Tribe. Yeah, I believe so, it has no cost. Oh, it costs nothing, I like it! I wouldn't mind experimenting with more of this kind of crap. And there's other ways of like cheating and no cost creatures into play. Too bad he has no name though. The no name soldier. Cogwork. Black, blue, white, one generic. You may have cogwork. Yes, you may. Dak. What, like Dak Faden? Land equipment. Oh god, we're good. We've already mixed a planeswalker with a land with an equipment. Bestow opponent seven cards from an opponent's graveyard. Oh god. Then put them back in any order. What is going on here? Bestow. First off, bestow is actually a keyword, so we can't have that. That goes against the rules. Um, bestow is like that creature or a mechanic. Uh, it sounds like give the opponent seven cards from an opponent's graveyard. So, hey, one opponent, you're going to get seven cards from this person's graveyard. Put them into your hand. Get Zyber, print it. Uh, yeah, it's not a spell. It's a land. So I'm get well. I'm get. It's missing a lot of things. It should probably say tap. You get to do it. Dak is a clever thief, so he disguised himself as land so you can equip such, such skill. Anyway, okay. Card is uh, unplayable by many metrics. Stone or S stone earning licid. Uh, green one generic for a one four human rogue. Pay a green one generic, add one mana of any color, and a creature type. So we get to add a creature type. Add them octopus, or elf, or sliver. 
or Homerid, I don't know. Oh, Homerid, Vlad the Impaler on Discord. Yes, of course, Homerid as well. Those are all legal. Anyway, this card makes no sense. Oh, the AI is super drunk today. They ramped up the drunk on the AI. All right, we got Howling Sanctuary, a four mana instant. Destroy all non-legendary creatures. Interesting. So the commanders survive. The Howling Sanctuary. Beware of the howls. Is this broken or what? Best. Ship it. People love the sound of this. And it's colorless. Anyone can play this thing. Anyone can play Howling Sanctuary. It's a, it's a instant speed sweeper. But only for the non-legends, though. Only for the non-legends. So, you know, you can't affect people's commanders with this card. Rabbit says it's broken. I can't tell if it's broken or not. Instant speed, board wipe? Nah, screw that. <laughs> yeah, green board wipe. We're, any Anyone can play this. Print in white and it's good. Ah, I think that's a little unfair if it's just in white. Ship, print for commander only. Mana cost too low though. Well, who says? I'd be curious to know how this would work in actual in an actual Magic the Gathering, like, uh, um, okay, they're all Magic the Gathering games, in a competitive tournament format. Because it's not a reliable sweeper, and there's tons of uh, legendary creatures out there. So if the opponent plays a Croxa, I mean, it's not going to hit that. Sisay loves this card. It's just a bit too good. Very good Wrath print. Howling is fine, but I think the Mana Fixer was meant to gain a creature type when you use uh, its ability. So like pay two to get buffed. Oh, by Lord. Oh, I guess so. It's possible. Everything is legendary not now. The box Amber is now 1,000 USD. Is there protection from Colorless? Uh, yes. I think. Does Cor uh, does Giver of Runes give protection from Colorless or protection from artifacts? I think, uh... But, like, it doesn't matter. It's just, it's destroy. So you have protection from artifacts. It doesn't matter. Or protection from Colorless. It wouldn't protect you from this. I'm printing it. I think it's a cool card. It's one of the cooler cards. Destroy all non-legendary creatures. Instant speed. Instant death. Combat body. A blue three generic enchantment. Whenever you cast a kick spell, target creature phases out. Okay, neat. The next instant or source spell you cast this turn costs two less to cast for each artifact you control. That is also neat. And then when combat body leaves the battle. So basically it's setting up like a giant cyclonic rift very easily. Oh no, but I don't think the kick it won't reduce the cost of the kicker cost. Okay, forget it. Uh, when combat body leaves the battlefield, draw a card for each flissier counter on combat body. Uh, you had me in the first half, but you didn't have me in the second half. Kind of It probably does danger. I just don't know what a flissier counter. Draw a card for each flissier counter. How do you even get the flissier counters on there? And they phase back in when? Uh, next turn. They always phase back in on then on your next turn. Yeah, it didn't stick the landing. So close. Yeah, sorry, combat body. Going to combat jail. Ooh, it wastes. Uh, I'm going to pronounce this fiber or buyer. Okay, I could just pronounce it. Buyer Bokuk. For a white one generic, we have an instant. Discard any number of target cards from target player's library. Oh, God. Basically says you you have no deck anymore. <laughs> Instant speed. Discard your library. Any number of cards. I'll just choose all of them. From there on, like, well, hold on. What is? Is it Ulamog? Or is it just Emrakul that um, returns all the cards back to? What card returns all cards from the graveyard to the? library. When Ulamog Gyre is put into the graveyard from anywhere, its owner shuffles their graveyard. Oh yeah, okay. So like basically, if that card was legal, everyone needs to own an Ulamog to protect yourself from that stupid card. Everyone needs protection from the buyer Bokuk. Yeah, basically destroy target library. So you just need to, uh, well Emrakul's banned, but Ulamog and Kozilek are not. The price of those cards are just jacked up to the maximum. 
And then at that point, people would be like, okay, how many cards do I want to mill or destroy? What is it? Destroy? Discard? How they phrase it? Yeah, discard any number of target cards in target player's library. Oh yeah, that would, that's true. Rest in peace and this is a combo. But that's true of uh, a lot of other cards too. But can we discard cards from the library? Well, we can now. It's a new design space. You can discard from your hand, you can discard from your library. Because it has targets. Discard any number of target cards. Oh, and what is that? Oh, yeah, actually, it, it, it says target. So what, like, I, can I specify cards in their library? Look at their library? Okay, I'll target all these except your Ulamog. You can draw that one. Anyway, uh, it's definitely dangerous. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Look at it. Actually, dude, it's the picture is perfect. It looks like a library that's on fire. It looks like a library that's on fire. Your library is uh, is in danger. Crimson Wolf, thanks so much for the super chat. When's the next custom MTG stream? I always miss, uh, seem to miss it. Next week. I don't know if you guys haven't noticed. We rotate every Wednesday. Custom AI, custom cards. Yeah, Library of Alexand Alexandria is burnt. This is a absolutely fantastic picture. Discard all of Target Player's library. It's a dumpster fire. What the hell is this? Dead coat sliver. Zero mana for us. <laughs> Everything's a sliver, and yet it's not a sliver. Human shaman. Tap. Add a black. Oh, God. Zero mana mana dork. Uh, pay a blue and a white. Tap. Sacrifice energy. And that's it. You just sack an energy for nothing. And pay a blue, one generic tap. Choose an opponent at random. <laughs> Why? What for? Anyway, the first ability is actually just broken. Play my zero mana mana dork. Yeah, it's basically a mox that you can't spend mana on this turn. Mox sliver. Mac mox dead coat. Anyway, this is broken. Super broken. Yeah, it's still mega danger. Yeah, it's worse because of the summoning sickness. Well, I'm not. I will still be concerned. Super concerned. Mindless response. Uh, black. Instant, choose two, counter target non-creature spell, exile target creature with power three or less, destroy target artifact. This is insane! I get to choose two for one black mana? Counter target, I could counter, so it's basically a counter spell. It's a negate for one black. Exile target creature with power three or less, that's pretty broken, and you do get to destroy <laughs> artifacts. For it with black mana! It's like, Black, we haven't been able to destroy artifacts. Not fairly. All right, let's buff up Black. Say no more. We'll we'll give you some artifact destruction. Explode this card with a nuclear weapon. Change it to blue and it's not broken. It's still broken. It, it doesn't matter who you give this to. It's like creature removal. Just one of these abilities. One of these abilities for one Black is OP, okay? Just one of them, and we get to choose two of them, and it's like a charm. Yeah, you have... Oh, you have to have two targets. Does that make it fair? Counter target non-creature spell, that's easy. I think they're pretty easy to pull off. I think the non-creature spell and exile a creature with power three or less is super easy to pull off. Love this against Yogmoth. Oh, you want to play Eldritch Evolution? Okay, we'll exile your stupid mana dork and uh, get rid of the Eldritch Evolution. Nanor. There is some artifact hate for black. It's just not common. I still think this is pretty broken. Pretty mindless of the AI to make this. Why does they have? Why does he have like a sheet of beta or something? Or I guess unlimited. It's got a sheet of magic cards in front of him. Whatever. Thirk of Mulas. Black, blue, one generic. Uh, for an instant, target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a creature card from it. That player chooses a zombies. Just a nonsensical card. Just blow up your opponent's mocks. 
All right, if you want to talk, like, yeah, the things that we would use with mindless response. First, we would definitely destroy this guy. And then we would uh, counter this one. That's what we would do. So the, the, the AI was actually trying to find an answer to the Bayer Bocuck and the uh, Dead Coat Sliver. It's because that's what Mindless Response can do. We can exile the creature and then counter the, the Bocuck. Okay, whatever. Okay, moving on. Keep Doll. What is this, some like weird looking scarecrow? Okay, we have a white three generic zero two bird soldier. And whenever a source you control deals damage to a player, that player loses the game. What? Whenever a source you control deals damage to a player, they just lose the game. They got it. They should make this a zero and a half creature. It's not small enough. Yeah, absolutely nope. You and your brother should play a match with AI. That, that is so hard to set up. It's fair in white. <laughs> Finally, white has some tools to get back into this game. Yeah, Phage the Untouchable in disguise. It's not, not, it's not, if it's not nonsense, it's danger today. It's like, yeah, it's either a nonsensical card or something ridiculously broken. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, at Card Market, they did a whole bunch of matches with AI-generated cards. I'm not putting in that effort, though. It's funny if someone redirects the damage you are dealing to yourself and them, you lose. Phage, Phage's pet bird. Yeah, it's common, too. Imagine this thing in draft. What a draft format. Instant death. should be a zero zero creature so you have to work to get it in play anyway yeah that's broken that's broken gauntlet of the mind we got a red blue one generic two two zombie warlock with flash sack a creature scry one holy moly it's fair like it's actually a fair card i don't even know if it's good pretty cool picture though can't tell what's a hand and what's a tree branch Hypergravity wave is super in for the blue red zombies. Are there blue red zombies? There's blue zombies out there, so it doesn't make that. It's not that far of a stretch to believe that there could be red zombies. It's not that good. Well, that it's good enough for commander. Where's the black? Not all zombies are black. Have you ever heard of state, fate stitcher, fate stitcher? All those stitcher cards. A lot of blue zombies out there. I think there's zombies. Yeah, there's zombies. Okay, we got the Boros Locket. Uh, white for generic for a 5-4 angel with flying and vigilance. And it's got monstrosity 3 for a green and 2 generic. Whenever you activate an ability of an, abil of an ability named Icky of the Amperit Permanent, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Boros Locket. Well, I do not know what Icky of the Amperit Permanent does. But I'm sure it's not too broken. Boros Locket looks good. Are we going to see the sequel? No. Nope. We got Guardians. Guardians. Great picture. Is this an AI generated image? Uh, black, blue, white, three generic for a five loyalty legendary planeswalker. Plus one. Tap all enchantments. We don't want those enchantments to get out of control, do we? Minus one. Search a library for a planes card from among them and put them into your hand. Any player may activate this ability. So basically, anyone can, like, drain our guardians down to nothing. My my poor loyalty planeswalker. This should be a plus ability. So, like, if anyone wanted to search their library for a planes, they have to do it at the expense of us um, gaining gaining loyalty. Oh, did we do this one before? This one, Have we uh, gone full circle since last week? And minus seven, draw a card for each loyalty counter. Remove this way. All right, if we've done this before, we've done this before. I'll give it the go-ahead. Did we do this one? Did we do the Curry Sealer for a white two generic split second counter target spell? <laughs> and it's got a bowl of curry here. Delicious. The Curry Sealer. <laughs> I like the duality of fighting with your opponent uh, over the abilities. That actually sounds pretty good. 
Whoa, nice. Counterspell in white with split second. And it's, well, it, it's a legendary instant. So, like, what does that mean? You need to have, like, an artifact or something out? You need an artifact or planeswalker in order to cast this spell? The curry is too powerful. Print it. That is some spicy curry! Who likes curry out there? I am a huge fan of curry. Especially with rice. Yeah, it's a legendary instant, so it needs a legend to cast. I think it, uh, it needs a legendary spell. Spell, or sorry, legendary permanent, which means I think an artifact, I think a planeswalker, or any a legendary creature. Mox Amber getting work. I, I actually don't know the rules around legendaries, so it can't be. I can't be one hundred percent certain. Yeah, something like oh, it just has to be something legendary, any legend. So my Thassa, God of the Sea, is good enough. Split second, hurry the curry, get that curry out. Curry is strong with this one. All right, uh, I guess we can print it. Oh no, that's what his drug cards are. Okay, I don't, I don't know how legendary inst. I don't play with any legendary instant stuff. So. Sue me if I got those rules wrong. Uh, double bannery, green, green, five generic instant spells your opponent's cast that target one or more creatures that player don't control could produce. Oh, we think we saw this one. Did we come full circle? Now, some of them are mixed up. I don't think we saw this one. Blue two generic Sparl in Beth. Flash exploit when Sparl in Beth exploits a creature. Counter target activated ability. Maybe we did see this. All right. I think we've gone all around. And it's a good time, too. The show has ended. The thing is, we had there was a lot of nonsense cards. And I'm like, okay, what commentary can I say this? It's a completely made up word by the AI. And we have no idea what it means. So we'll just skip and move to something that we can interpret. And if you want to be part of Coffee and MTG and check out the AI-generated cards, don't forget to be here Monday to Friday, uh, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. Remember, AI-generated cards are every second Wednesday. But please be here every other day. Thanks so much, everyone, for support. The Super Chats, everyone who's a member on YouTube or a member on Patreon, I, I really appreciate it. If you love Coffee and MTG, links to support the channel are in the description. But most importantly, thanks, everyone, for showing up. Because without without people like them, we're absolutely the rabbit corn. Pyre. Lucy, uh, Lucian. PM. A. Robin. I'd have no show. Monster CC. Without you guys... It's not, it's not very, it's not nearly as exciting without you guys. I'll just put it that way. You feel very lonely around here. So as usual, my coffee crew, keep brewing up them coffees and we'll keep brewing up the magic. Take care of yourselves and I will see you at the next cup.